evening to you all. Thank you, Tony. With us on Path of Success Day 2, which is dedicated for the Sri Lankan body of the London Stock Exchange Group. Now, London Stock Exchange Group is one, one, of, the, one of the global industrial organizations in the world. And is the board, it is the board partner of Connexius and has a history of more than 300 years and has diversified the global financial markets infrastructure and data business. They have enabled businesses and economies around the world to fund innovation, manage risk, and create jobs with their extensive experiences, deep knowledge, and not to forget their worldwide presence across financial markets. Their contribution has supported the financial stability and growth of communities and economies globally. London Stock Exchange Group is headquartered in the United Kingdom with significant operations in 70 countries around the world. They employ around 25,000 people globally and more than half is located here in Asia Pacific. So now let's get a glimpse of our gold partner of the event. So today we have with us Ms. Shashini Konkadu, who is here to give you insights on CV writing and facing virtual interviews. Ms. Shashini joined LSEG in May 2018 as an associate manager on talent acquisition and is now the assistant manager of talent acquisition and resourcing. Prior to joining LSEG, she worked in the corporate sector with Dialogue and Pearson, counting over eight years of experience under human resource management. She holds a master's in business administration from the University of Wolverhampton, in addition to her great experience. So now I'd like to welcome Ms. Shashini. The platform is yours. Thank you very much for the uh, introduction. I hope all of you can uh, hear me properly. Yes, we can hear you. All right, okay, cool. All right, okay. Are we all good to start? Yes, we are. Okay, uh, thank you once again for the introduction and I would like to welcome all of you for the session. It's so great to you know um, get connected with you virtually with the new normal. So uh, with me today, I have another colleague joining from LSEC. So um, let me quickly um, introduce her. So we have um, Nikeshala Samantilaka, who is also working for the talent acquisition team um, as a senior executive. So, um, you know, through all the sessions, then she will um, assist me. All right. So before we do start the session, a um, few, uh, you know, um, few reminders for all the participants. 
So please make sure uh, you have mute yourself uh, so that you know we don't get disturbed by the background noises. Also, you are not disturbed by anything else. So this we have about I think good 50 minutes for the session. So make sure you're not disturbed. You have informed your family members that you know you're going to uh, you know join the session, so not to disturb you. And also during the session, if you get any questions, you have the um, chat function um, uh, chat feature available, so you can you know type your question there. And as and when time permits, then we will try to answer question as much as possible. So um, this is just uh, you know you saw my face. So this is Nikesh Lal's face. All right. So let's start the session. Uh, so today, what we thought, of course, the main topic would be, you know, how to uh, do your CV and then how to face virtual interviews. But what we thought, you know, throughout the session, you will hear a lot of terms related to the recruitment process. So we thought it will be, you know, beneficial for you to first, you know, in a nutshell, understand what this recruitment process is. Everyone is talking about hiring, recruitment, talent division, different, different terms, right? So we thought it will be beneficial for all of you to just, you know, in a nutshell to know what the recruitment process is, then we will, uh, you know, move into our main topic. Uh, so when it comes to the recruitment process, basically we have three main stages, right? So that is, um, I'll explain you in the next slide. So we have sourcing stage, we have CV screening stage, we have interview stage, and then we have the offer stage. So four main um, stages. So let's see what is sourcing. So sourcing is the proactive searching for qualified job candidates for current or planned open positions. So different companies use different different sourcing methods. So I'm sure you have heard about top job and you have seen job advertisement on newspapers. And then um, also through your career fairs, you get to know opportunities. So these are the channels as companies, you know, we use to source candidates. And for certain senior positions, we work with agencies, headhunters, likewise. And then um, uh, the other um, the other stage is CV screening. What is screening? You have heard this um, uh, word called shortlisting, right? So CV screening all about um, the process of uh, shortlisting uh, CVs to um, you know according to the job description. We go through the CVs and we shortlist candidates. So that's what we call in, in some simple terms, CV shortlisting, right? And then based on the shortlisting, then we start the interview process. Um, so what happens uh, with the current situation, of course, we do virtual interview. In an ideal scenario, we invite the candidate to come to our office premise and then, you know, for them to meet the panel members. So the standard process is you have about sometimes uh, uh, maximum, uh, you know, um, two to three interviews, depending on the position. And that's what we call interview stage. And if needed, uh, for certain position, we have something called assessment also, assessment exam, aptitude test, but it is again, you know, uh, according to each role. And the final stage is the offer decision. Um, so we are, that is when, uh, you know, we offer the role to the selected candidate. So in a nutshell, that's what the recruitment process is. All right. So let's start with the most important thing, uh, CV, right? I'm sure most of you or maybe all of you have created your CV already, right? Uh, so let's see what does a good CV consist. So basically your CV showcase your personality because at the first point we have not seen you, we have not spoken to you. So the very first thing as the recruiter we get you know, to our hand is your CV. So that's really, you need to really um, showcase your personality from your CV. And also a good CV should be very straightforward and to the point, right? And also you need to make sure you have a genuine profile, introduction, summary. And also you need to earn a favorable job role interest. It shouldn't be like a generic CV where you can you know, put for anything, marketing, sales, HR, IT, anything, no. You have to tailor your CV to according to the specific job. So let's talk in detail in coming slides. So this is just, we thought, you know, we can just uh, show you what our typical day looks like, right? From our recruiter point of view. So average, we get about 200 CVs every day. 
and then we spend about five to you know seven seconds uh, to look at each CV, and then um, it is good to have a cover letter, but the chances are very low that you know we mainly focus on the uh, CV, and then things like grammar mistakes and uh, you know um, uh, things like that actually can you know really you know cause rejections. Okay. So CV is making. So um, we will talk about what are the things that you should do and what are the things that you should actually avoid. Okay. Um, so give me a second. All right. Okay. Uh, so we'll focus on what are the things that you should really do when you make your CV. So um, sometimes some uh, individual, they think that if they have like, you know, five to six pages in their CV, that will really add value. Not really, because like I showed you in the previous slide, per day we get about 200 odd CVs, right? So then we need to be as recruited, we need to be really efficient. So what if we get a CV which has about six to seven pages, right? That takes about five to 10 minutes of our time to go through it right so then you need to make sure that you keep your cv very short you mention only the relevant things and maybe maximum two pages two to three pages will be enough right and then tailor your cv to the job what does that mean example let's say you are looking for a position in um, you know cyber security right so you need to really focus and put the things related to cyber security example you know Maybe you can be somebody <clears throat> who is good with, um, you know, another skill, let's say networking, right? But you need to understand that this particular job that you are applying is for cyber security. You need to show them why you are good at cyber security, why the company should pick you for cyber security role, right? So you need to focus on that and put, you need to highlight the skills related to that particular job. Example, if you have applied for a role in engineer cyber security, right, you have to uh, highlight the skills like, you know, security testing, you know, ethical hacking, you know, things like that. Maybe the rest you can put later, right, but you need to really target the particular job that you apply. Uh, let's take another example, let's say um, HR, you want to try HR position, but you have, you know, maybe marketing experience and skills also, but then you need to understand you should first highlight your HR skills. And then later, whatever other skills, so that you know you are really targeting the particular job, okay? Because we have seen sometimes uh, the candidate they really try to keep it very generic so that they can try multiple positions. <laughs> so don't be lazy like that, right? So then, if you really want to get that job, you need to you know make sure that you are really targeting the particular job that you are applying, right? And also make sure you choose the correct CV type because when you go to you know internet you will see different different formats or maybe you have seen your you know seniors or maybe your friends what they are using so don't just follow them blindly because sometimes we have seen candidates they are just freshers but the, the format that they are using is not relevant that is good for somebody who has let's say 10 years of working experience right so you need to make sure you choose the correct cv type right which will be relevant for you you should not try to copy and paste, uh, let's say somebody who has working experience or because that is not really going to add value for you, okay? And also you need to make sure you keep your CV very neat and tidy because uh, sometimes when you open a CV uh, in word format, it's like all over the place. So before going through the CV, we need to really see the formatting first, right? So make sure the um, recommended, you know, uh, type would be PDF so that the you know the alignment things like that you know will be perfect that's okay but you can use word format also but you need to really make sure you know the formatting you know the um, paragraph things like that is you know neat and clean okay and also the next point is support claims with specific what does that mean so anybody can say okay I'm good at this and then I'm good at that right example let's say I have good leadership skills Okay, you say so, and then so you need to uh, support your claims. Example, you know, then under extracurricular activities, you can put if you are a prefect in the school or if you have, you know, uh, hold any positions like, you know, let's say the commerce society or the, you know, any any, you know, any other societies. If you have hold any titles, you can put those things so that you know the recruiters know. Okay, she says or he says you know they have leadership skills okay i can see that because they have hold some positions all right and then if you have won in some competitions right things like that make sure you really put those things 
and also you know include power words right not just you know very you know lame or you know very you know normal language just try to include power words right determination objectives right things like that just try to add to your cv and also this is something that a lot of candidates they think it's not really important to add professional qualification when you have a degree they think that okay that's the most important thing they put that that they really forget to mention their professional qualification right professional qualifications such as cima charter double ap project management or even a diploma in english because that really adds value because um, sometimes when we call the candidate and when we you know sort of do an interview only they add one by one oh actually i'm doing cima also and i'm like okay have you mentioned in the cv or oh, no right okay and i'm doing you know pmp also because they think when you have the degree that's the most important thing the other professional qualification won't really matters actually that's not the truth those qualifications are also very much important because you are investing your time right and energy to study for something and also money so please make sure you put those qualifications also right and also include a personal statement in your cv so in the coming slide we will show you some examples of good cvs so that um, you will see you know what a good personal statement looks like okay and then um, focusing on um, the uh, don'ts okay what are things that we should uh, avoid right so please don't tell a lie because you know you have to be very genuine you have to be very honest about your qualification experience because if you lie to one particular company don't think okay i just can you know avoid them and apply for another company because recruiters we are connected with each other we may work for different different companies but uh, we are connected with each other because it's like one industry right so please make sure you are very honest about your qualification right and then you know you are very generous don't try to tell lies and also don't include your irrelevant personal information you are applying for a job right so then very basic personal information you like your civil status your home address things like nationality you can include but you know um this actually real examples we have seen some people put in their height you know what their parents are doing what their professions are those are irrelevant we only want you as an individual so don't you know don't think that if you put those things i can impress or you know that will add value nothing like that okay and also you know putting unnecessary references right because i work for this company you know of course you can put non related resumes you know that's the standard but on top of it putting more and more references is irrelevant right and also make sure you know uh, of course this is nobody you know type or hand write your cv right so make sure you follow that also and if you are someone who has worked who has work experience if you have gaps in between employment that's perfectly okay for you to have gaps but make sure you explain those gaps right because some people might take a break to you know take care of their you know sick mother or father right or sometimes they have some you know um, personal problems that they need sort so they had to take a break in between employment those are perfectly fine but just make sure that you explain why the gap is so sometimes we might think okay this person has worked for a company and then was unemployed for 6 months then only he has started working in this company what happened in between right then we we get question so if you have explained your employment gap example you know i was traveling or you know i was you know taking care of my mother then we know okay there is a reason for them to have a gap right so this is applicable for people who have experience and also include um, jargon unless necessary again this comes to uh, experience candidate because you know when you work for a company internally you might have certain terms right example name of processors name of teams things like that uh, not necessarily that i know that right as a recruiter from elsec so sometimes we have seen when they explain what they did they put a lot of jargon and then i don't know what those are because i have not worked for that company right so you know you really should avoid those kind of things and also mention money right never ever uh, you know mention i uh, my salary at this company was this much and i'm expecting this much from your company in your cv that is not necessary to put and also this is applicable for a lot of you know um, fresh um, candidates because they don't have so much to put in your their cv right they try to put the entire syllabus 
no because as recruiters technical recruiters non technical recruiters we know if you talk about university of marathu or what their syllabus is what their specialization is at, that is totally irrelevant for us to know your entire syllabus so don't think because you have don't have anything to post if you put your entire syllabus that will add value not at all because like i told you at the beginning you know you will add more and more pages that will not add value at all okay Okay, this is just a sample of a very basic but an ideal CV, right? So you can see the first name and last name is very uh, pretty much prominent. It's at the top. So sometimes they put everything but their name in very small letters somewhere in the corner, right? And then you can see the contact details, most important thing, right? So we go through your CV. We want to give you a call and you know sort of have a chat. And then you know if your contact informations are not visible, it's you know wasting our time, right? So you can see in this CV the name is very much prominent, and then right on top they have mentioned the a uh, phone number, email, other contact details. Because um, trust me, I'm talking based on our experience. Sometimes when we you know go through a CV, uh, we really have to spend a lot of time to find their contact details. It's somewhere in a corner. Right, so please make sure you put your contact details in a very prominent uh, manner so that you know it will save other people time. So make sure when you put your phone number, you just you know sometimes you are very confident. Okay, it's my own number, but sometimes we have come across situations where the number is incorrect. It's someone else's number or one digit is missing. Right, so then then you might. Because there is no way the recruiter can contact you because you have given a wrong contact number. So please make sure you double check your contact information. No matter how good your CV is, if we can't contact you, then you know it's going to be a waste. And also email address. That is also sometimes let's say um, if we want to communicate to you via email, because you know email address is something where people can make a lot of errors, right? So please make sure you double check your email address. Right, and also when you start applying for a job, please make sure your email address. You know, it looks professional because sometimes we know you create your email address when you are in you know grade but six, seven, or you know you put some funky words right and create your emails right. So because you have no idea about the corporate world, you know, one day you want to do a job, right? So maybe you know when you um start you know applying for jobs when you want to become an adult in the corporate world, it will be good for you to have a Professional email address. Ideal format would be first name, last name, and then if it's common, right? Maybe add some digits and then whatever the email address, right? Because sometimes the candidate name is something. The email address is completely different. Something else. Maybe they have put their pet name, you know, some funky name, so that it, it's not very relatable. So the ideal format would be your first name, last name, and then add some digits and then you know. Create your email address at least for you know your CV purpose, and then uh, if you have a LinkedIn profile, right? So make sure you add um, uh, the URL as well. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, don't think that I should be someone who has experience to create a LinkedIn profile. Not like that. So it will be really good because just like other social media channels, LinkedIn is also very much connected with corporate world. Right, so the companies they post their stories, their vacancies, you know, some free trainings, etc. So if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, please make sure you go it free, right? So you go and create a LinkedIn profile. Just like that, if you have Twitter or any other portfolio or blog, you can mention the references there, right? And see, uh, then the objective, right? So basically, what does that mean? So you can put. Remember, I told you you can put the, like a personal statement or like an objective. So just not like a paragraph, but in brief, put what your objective is, right? What you want to achieve in your career life. So that will really help the recruiter or the hiring manager to understand what is you know your what, what sort of future you are expecting, right? So make sure and also don't put you know your the in uh, the whole lot of paragraphs, right? You know, SS and SS. No, in a nutshell, just put what your objective is, and then uh, you know the education degree, right? And from which university or the institute, and duration, and then if you have any professional qualification, 
right and uh, after you put your academic you can put your professional qualification also and if you're someone who has experience it's very important for you to put your experience also uh, so you need to put the designation that you were you know working for and the name of the company and most importantly the duration right so when did you start when did you finish so that that will have the recruiter to calculate years of experience a lot of candidates they miss to you know put the date and also um, not the entire j right but for us to get an understanding maybe you know put two to three lines summarizing your jd what were your responsibilities there because we wouldn't know until we call you what did you do in a particular company so you know maybe few bullet points you know in a summary put whatever the high level task you did there and also if you don't have any working experience but you have done an internship don't think that it's not important right so please make sure you put even if um the qualification or the experience is related to internship please make sure you put that also and then skills so remember i told you you need to tailor your cv for the specific job that you are applying so please make sure you put your skills and strengths here right and then again extracurricular activities right that is very important for us to you know understand what sort of a personality you have if you have done any sports and to have like i told you earlier if you have you know been a part of some organizations voluntary work those are very important right so please make sure you put that also okay and then also um some tips like um so please make sure you if you don't have a linkedin account you go and create one and then also you know before you um, you know going for an interview do some research about the company we will talk in detail about this in the coming slide and your email address you know have a professional email address and then um, putting a picture in the cv right lot of we we get question from lot of candidates is it mandatory i would say it's not mandatory but it's helpful especially in this virtual environment right but please make sure if you are putting a picture the picture should be something you know appropriate um you know it doesn't mean that you know you have to put a picture where you are wearing a tie with a full blazer something like like your passport picture the nice picture but something you know appropriate to put for a cv cuz um, i've seen sometimes people put the um, prop their picture and you can see other people's hand or you can see a waterfall behind them right they have taken the picture when you know while on a trip but you know make sure if you don't have appropriate picture then that's fine to leave it but if you are putting it please make sure you put like a proper appropriate picture and then um you know um you put um referees right in your cv right so please make sure when you put a uh, referees in your cv you you are you know generous enough to keep the referees informed that you are going to put them because sometimes some companies might call them right so we have faced that situation you know when you call the referee they can't figure out uh, you know who the candidate is right and then they feel embarrassed and as recruiters we also feel embarrassed right sometimes you know i have faced uh, some situation where they are like i'm so sorry i can't recall that person's name can i check and come back to you so you know please make sure when you are putting a referee right uh, you you really you have to keep them informed uh, you know so be ready i am going to apply for a job i'm going to put you as a referee right and also um um also you put referees and also um if you want to you know inquire about your cv status or something you as the individual you need to speak right you know to the relevant recruit or the company you should not get anybody else to speak on behalf of you this we see from a lot of students sometimes their parent calls us you know uh, you know family members calls right because you know you are going to enter the corporate world as an individual so then you should be you know confident enough to talk on behalf of you because it's not going to be the school time anymore this is mainly for freshers uh, you know uh, so you need to really talk on behalf of you not to get anyone else's uh, support okay this is an example of like a um, you know a real cv right not a format it's a real cv we have hidden the personal information we have taken the concept from the particular individual i'm sure you can see it so the picture here right and the, this this black color box is their contact details um, and then their uh, you know 
um, name. Uh, sorry, this is name, right? And then you can see uh, they have added the personal statement under the picture. And then you can see the contact information are very much prominent. And then see, so they have put um, the degree, right? And then the person has not, you know, missed to put the professional qualification as well as, you know, the advanced level results, right? Because the person has obtained a good, uh, you know, district rank and a Z score. Probably the person is proud about it, wanted to tell, which is a good thing, right? And then skills. And just see, um, the person has been very creative. So you have seen that the person has rated also out of 100, right? That's like something very, you know, useful. And then because the person doesn't have any working experience, so here yeah, the person has put academic project, which is fine, right? Because you don't have any experience, not even an internship. So you have, you know, what the experience you have is related to project. So you have mentioned that, which is totally fine. And then achievement. Remember I told you if you have won something, if you, you know, took part in some sports, don't forget to mention. So under achievement, you can see they have mentioned that also. All right. So this is an example of another good CV. Again, you know, the objective is their professional qualification, academic skills, right? And then um, just see personal information. The person has only put the relevant information, right? Nothing else. Certificates and achievements, project, and then non-data reference. This is another example of a good CV. All right, so the interview stage, what happens here, <laughs> right? So we thought we, of course, we won't be able to cover everything in one hour. Maybe we'll just touch upon few frequently um, asked questions, right? So, so the most famous question is, tell me something about yourself, right? Okay, now this is very comfortable. It's all about you. So because of that, you are confused how to answer. Right. So you need to understand that. Um, so um, the purpose of, you know, there can be, you know, different, different purposes, but, you know, something common is to make yourself comfortable because we are very comfortable to talk about ourselves. Right. So if the interviewer feels that you are a bit nervous or no, something like that, they can ask this question to make you relax and make you comfortable. OK, so then how you have to answer this question is you, need, you don't have to really tell like your life story here because the uh, the panel member or the members they have already gone through your CV, they know about you, right? So, maybe in a nutshell, you can think you know, talk about you, right? And then uh, they might ask, What have you heard about us? So, remember, I told you in the previous slide when you are, you know, uh, going for an interview or applying for a role, it will be good for you to do, do some background work, like some research about a company. That should be your genuine interest, right? Example, I'm going to join LSCG, I'm going to apply for LSCG, then you know you have readily available sources out there. You can visit our website, our Facebook page, LinkedIn page to find out what do we really do. You should have that genuine interest, right? So then if when if we ask this question, if you really tell, you know, what we do, what we are into, that will really, you know, impress that. So then it shows that you are very enthusiastic. And you have done that, you know, bit to, you know, uh, know about the company also, right? And then uh, the other question is sometimes you will ask, where do you see yourself in five years? So basically, when someone asks this question, you be genuine because, uh, you know, because as an individual, when I was at very young age, I have not, I didn't, I didn't have any clear picture about, you know, what my future will be like, right? I did not want to think, you know, beyond two to three years. So if you have not thought about it, that's totally fine to tell you, okay, I'm yet to decide it first. I want to get exposure. You can be very open and genuine about it, right? Just uh, because you think that it's important, you should give an answer to impress the panel. Don't just, you know, tell a lie, right? Be genuine. If you have really thought about your future, you can really talk about it. And, uh, but make sure when you, talk about it you have to be practical also about it because sometimes we hear you know if you are just coming out of university and if you have about let's say six months internship experience you know what if you say after five years i want to become like a, you know head of a particular department which is not realistic right you need to go step by step 
So please make sure when you talk about your objectives, those are realistic also, right? And then the other question is, what are your trends and areas of development? People might ask this question, right? So then if you are really good at something, be confident and say, I think I have good communication skills. Example, I think I can, you know, be a good, really good team player as well as I can be a leader, right? And also, um, and then don't think that, okay, uh, areas of development, uh, you know, these days nobody will ask you what your weakness are, right? We don't call those weakness. We call areas of development. So someone might ask this question and don't think if I tell something that will add a negative impact on me, not really, right? We are humans. Uh, all of us have areas to, because I have eight years experience, as I did, I have areas to improve, right? That will never end, right? So every day we will have something to develop and learn. So you can be open because um, I have come across some situations where they are open to tell, okay, I think I should improve my, you know, presentation skill, public speaking skills, right? And if you tell that why you think that particular area you need to improve, also it will be good for you to um, uh, talk about what are the action you have taken about it. It was so impressive for me because when I was doing some interviews, I have heard this from a lot of, you know, press students um, telling me that, you know, I think I should really, you know, improve my public speaking skills. So I have joined my Toastmasters club at the university. I'm watching, you know, TV programs, you know, I talk with my friends, you know, I practice it, things like that. So they tell, they know what the gap is. Also, they have taken corrective action to, you know, improve it, right? And also, um, then also the other question is, why have you chosen this particular field? Um, again, uh, this connects with, you know, you need to tailor the CV for the specific job. Example, let's take um, uh, HR, right? If you are going for an HR position and if they ask, you need to show that what do you know about that particular area, right? Maybe you don't know a um, lot of things, but whatever the little you know, you need to really show why you are interested about it. Um, <clears throat> because um, when we, you know, interview some candidate, they really, you know, talk about different, different things, okay? Example, cybersecurity, the latest trends are like this. I want to learn more and I want to become someone like this in the industry, things like that. So it be, will be really good for you to show if you are interested in one particular area, you are really passionate about it. That will really, you know, add value. And also the last thing is, do you have any questions for us? Definitely, you know, uh, the panel will ask this question from you, right? So um, just make use of this opportunity because someone out there, you know, making themselves available out of their busy schedule, right? Some industry experts, some experienced, you know, individuals, they make themselves available to interview you. It's an opportunity for you. You might get the job, might not get the job, but please make of, make use of that particular opportunity and just ask something, you know, uh, because you might not meet the same person again, right? So maybe, you know, you can ask how they, you know, what the, you know, culture looks like, what are the career opportunities, right? Maybe about, uh, you know, how do you develop this particular skill set in this company? Are you using this technology, something, you know, which will add value to your life. So you're not wasting that particular, you know, two to three minutes. You, are, you will learn something from it. Okay, and uh, so um, our interview model, model, what does that mean, right? So basically, uh, interview panel, they might ask, okay, tell me about a time where you were challenged with your project. If you are like, you know, just after university, you will not have work experience. So they might ask, okay, tell me um, about a time where you were uh, struggling or challenged with your project. That's the question. So how you need to answer is what this time interview model says, right? So first you need to say what the project was, right? And you need to say what the challenge was clearly. And then, so the they ask about your challenge, but you need to make sure you just, you know, add a little bit about the action that what you do, um, what did you do about it? For example, you know, during the last year project, uh, it was really difficult for me to get um, things done from one particular individual. He was not cooperating. That was the um, challenge and action. What did you do about it, right? Did you just let it go like that? No, what I did, I just had a, you know, one-on-one -on -one chat with the person and asked whether he's struggling with anything, what I can help, uh, you know, with. So that's the action that you took. Richard, what happened after that? Just conclude the answer, just complete the answer. 
as a result of that, you know, he told that he's really struggling with some personal matters, right? So then, you know, I, I helped him to, you know, uh, get done the task. Something like, just an example, right? When you give an answer, just complete it like that. Okay, I had a challenge. I did this. As a result, we, you know, we finished the project. So that your answer is complete. Okay, something um, very important, you know, with the new normal, right? <clears throat> Preparing for a virtual interview. So at LSEG, since last year, March, we have been doing virtual interviews. So we are using different platforms like Zoom, and we used to have Skype and then Microsoft Teams, right? So different, different channels to do virtual interviews. So we thought it will be good for us to, you know, sort of touch this area also, that is the new normal. Right. So what you should do as a, you know, um, as a candidate, if you are, you know, invited for a virtual interview, please make sure you test your technology. Right. If your interview is at six o'clock today, make sure you join maybe, you know, maybe 15 to 20 minutes early. You check whether your mic is working, whether the audio is uh, good, whether the video is working, right? whether the Internet connection is proper. Right. And also, um, because sometimes <clears throat> when we do interviews, we can see sometimes all of a sudden, you know, we can't see anything. We can't hear anything. There are a lot of background noises and they say, I'm sorry, something's wrong with my mic, things like that. So then <clears throat> please make sure before your interview, you are well prepared with the um, technical um, things. Right. And then um, dress for success. Don't think of it's a virtual interview. I can join the interview in my pajamas, right? whatever I want. So you can see in these pictures also, because uh, just dress for success, it shouldn't be like, you know, like I told you before, a complete formal attire where you are wearing a tie or something, nothing like that, but something, you know, which will look professional, right? Because the person is not seeing you face to face, right? right? It's just the video and the audio. So you need to really make sure that, you know, you dress for success. And also uh, you need to pick a spot where, you know, uh, the connection, because even in the same house, you know, for different, different areas, the connection might be different, right? So before the interview, so you make sure, you know, you select a proper place, uh, you know, we know that all of us, we don't have separate rooms, right? That's totally fine, but please make sure for that particular one hour, half an hour time, you borrow, um, if there's just one room in the house, that's fine, you borrow it from the family member and then make it clean, right? When you on the um, video, the uh, interviewer shouldn't see some clothes hanging on the, you know, uh, the table or the chair, you know, people, you know, walking behind you. For that particular half an hour, one hour, please make sure your background is not disturbed, right? And then um, also a lot of candidates, they forget that, um, you know, because it's virtual, you are not seeing the person in front of you, they forget their body language, right? So be very cautious, the camera is on, they can, you know, see your body language, don't forget that. It is natural for us to, you know, happen that. So then uh, make sure you, 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 are, uh, you are cautious about your body language, right? And also <clears throat> uh, common thing we have, you know, when we do interviews on calls, you know, sometimes, yeah, you know, um, the mother comes and say, okay, lunch is ready. Because you clearly didn't tell her that you are going to, you know, join an interview and it's video interview. So please make sure you keep your family members, your you know spouse, your mother, father, or whoever you live with. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to you know join a call. It's a video interview. Please make sure you don't disturb me, right? I have on my video like that, so that they will not come and disturb you. You will not be embarrassed, right? And also, if you are to switch on your media um, video, you make sure your camera position is correct. So you need to place the camera at the right eye level, right? And then if you need some extra height, you can put your, you know, laptop or whatever the uh, item you are using on top of some extra, uh, you know, book so that you will have the proper height, right? And then also don't sit too close or don't sit far away from the camera, right? Just sit at the right distance so that, you know, the panel can see you properly and it's easy for them to communicate to you. Okay, and then always make sure you are, your face and your shoulders that is visible, just like we have shown in this, you know, picture. Right. So we have like 10 more minutes, right? So then um, now Shashini, uh, she was talking a lot of theoretical stuff about this is how you need to do, this is how you have to talk, right? 
can we do a live demonstration uh, of course we can do so i told you i'm assisted with my colleague nikeshala so this is not going to be very you know um, long interview just a quick interview to just touch upon the basic points and show you and then after the interview you all can give us question that's in like you know what did you feel about it you can make the judgment to see whether you all are going to hire nikeshala for the role or no so basically i'll be the interviewer and nikeshala will be the candidate so the position will be um, graduate role in let's say uh, business management right um, so um, we will see uh, you know how that goes um, nikeshala are you ready Maybe um, if you think you can help her to unmute herself. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, what about others? Because uh, I was not able to. Can someone help us and say whether yeah. you can hear Nikesha? Yeah, I can hear you, Nikesha. All right. Thank Perfect. you. Thank okay. you. Okay, Nikki, are you ready to start? Yes, we are good to go. All right. So then, okay, cool. Hi, Nikeshala. Nice to virtually meet you. My name is Shashini, and I'm a part of the recruitment team at LSAG. Uh, are you comfortable to start our interview for the position of um, graduate business management? Hi, Shashini. I'm excited to be here and grateful for this opportunity and I'm ready for the interview. Great. So I have gone through your CV, but I would like to know more about you. Can, me tell, can you tell me something about yourself? Yes, of course. So I was born originally in Switzerland and I moved to Canada after a year and then came to Sri Lanka in 2006. So I've been moving around a lot my entire life and it's allowed me to become flexible and adapted, adaptable to changing environments. Uh, I've mixed a lot with different cultures and people which has made me very open-minded as a person. By nature, I am somebody that enjoys learning new things and finding solutions to various problems. Uh, I would say my highest achievement would be my distinction awarded degree in HR. It's something that I've always been passionate about. Wow, that's great to hear. Thank you for sharing that with me. I have noticed that you have completed one year internship with Pearson. What would you say is the most challenging, you know, uh, the situation that you have come across and what did you do about it? Yes, so as an intern, I was given the responsibility to manage the end-to-end -end hiring process for IT-related interns after a few months of proving my commitment to the role. I would say the most challenging thing was understanding the technical side of the business. As I was from the business side, it took a lot of questioning, researching and asking around to understand what programming language were out there and what business areas required what technology. Great. So let's backtrack to your university period. What was the last project that you handled? Yes, uh, I was the leader for a group presentation where we had to come up with a new or updated product to be marketed in a country. So there was a five members all together. What would you say was the biggest challenge during that project? Um, I would say that would be managing everyone's ideas and conflicting opinions. How did you manage it? So first I wrote down everybody's ideas on the whiteboard and we all progressively discussed each idea, the pros and cons and which idea had ample of information on the internet together. So that way everybody respected all ideas and understood what would work and what wouldn't when it was discussed. That's great. I see that you have completed your degree in HR. Uh, so may I ask why you chose HR? Actually, uh, if I'm being really honest, it is a good platform to build my career in life and enhance my skills, knowledge, and abilities. So as per my view, to be a good HR person, we need to have excellent interpersonal skills, friendly, good attitude, decision-making skills, and etc. So, so many of things. So 
However, exploring HR actually made me understand that I enjoy the element of HR as I'm a people person. Okay, that's nice. And so finally, uh, do you have any questions to ask from me? Yes, I have a one question, Shashini. So is there a clear and defined career path as a graduate? Of course, that's a great question. So thank you for asking that, Nikeshala. Yes, of course, because when you are hired as a graduate for a particular department, right? So you will be given the particular training and then, you know, if needed, then you will be rotated among the other area to get like the overall exposure. And then at the end of the, you know, the graduate, uh, the training period, then, you know, based on the available opportunities in the company, you will be absorbed to a particular role after assessing, you know, what is your, what have you learned and, you know, what is your interest, you know, towards your future. So then depending on the available vac uh, vacancies, you can start to, uh, you know, career at associate level and then, you know, move um, in the career ladder with LSEG. Throughout your journey, you know, you will be supported with, you know, a lot of training, development activities and support from the uh, HR as well as your managers. You will have some good mentoring uh, program, you know, in-house training. And also we will encourage you to go out and, you know, get other certifications also done financially. The company will support you. All right. Thank you so much for the detailed explanation, Chashi. That's all from me. Okay, thank you, Nikeshara. Thank you so much for your time. We will keep you posted with the next steps if you are shortlisted for the second stage. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time too. Thank you, Shashini. All right, okay. So that was Nikeshala's um, interview, right? And then, um, so this is um, her CV, right? So then um, if we take a look at her CV quickly, you can see she has, you know, well, uh, you know, organized her CV and she has put her contact details. And then I can see that she has a HR background. And then also I can see she has completed some certifications. And then also I can see she has, you know, got a good academic record. So at, in a nutshell, it was very easy for me to have like, a, you know, um, understanding about her profile. Okay, so then uh, this is the time to use the chat function. Um, so based on this interview, right? Now, it was a short interview, right? But tell me based on the answer. Now, you all um, heard from me how you have to face it, how you have to answer certain frequently asked questions. Based on that, tell me, would you hire Nikeshala? If someone wants to unmute themselves and give down, so that's also fine. Okay, okay, yes, yes, okay. <laughs> All right, okay, so Nikeshila, you know, some may agree that I should hire you. All right, okay, so um, actually that's the you know end of the session. It was a, like a very short session we designed for one hour, but we tried our best to touch the you know important and made part of the you know the hiring process and to give you some tips about it, right? Thank you, Ms. Shashini, for that wonderful session. I'm sure everyone got a good understanding on CV writing and virtual interviews.